the uh, more elaborate model. Here's the serosa, single layer squamous cells. Here's that muscularis externa tunic made up of a outer longitudinal and an inner circular. And if you look at the fibers here and here, they're going in a different direction than here and here. Then you have here the tunic submucosa, it's under the mucus. It has two structures. This represents an aggregated lymph node Pyre's patch. called Pyre's patch. And this here represents a gland in the tunic submucosa called the Brunner's gland. Only found in the duodenum, mm -hmm. and hence it's often called a duodenal gland. Am I making sense? Yes. Now, you notice I'm moving from model to slides, because in some ways it makes sense. We're using the same terminology over and over. Here we see the simple columnar cells, and some of them have the little blue dot, which represents a goblet cell. Here you can see the goblet cells as little blue dots. And you can see right there little round red dots representing the opening to the depressions here and the depressions here called trips of lubricant or intestinal glands. glands. Intestinal glands always found in the intestines. Villi only in small intestines. Pyre's patch, only in small intestine, specifically small intestine called the ilium. ilium. This, Brunner's gland or duodenal gland, only in the duodenum. So what I'm teaching you are characteristics, aren't I? Now what you can do is memorize each structure of this tube as you go through that entire tube. Or you can look for similarities and differences. differences. Now, in all honesty, out of the thousands of students that I have, 99% of you will never need to go into this digestive and respiratory and urinary and reproductive histology.